Hello everyone, I am generally irritable here coming to you from the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women's annual lilac breakfast. So it was a great, uh, great lunch, great breakfast featured speaker with Mike Pence here at the Bedford Village Inn in Bedford, New Hampshire. And I'm super excited today to have with me Miss Lily Tong Williams, who's running for U.S. House, uh, not Senate, right? U.S. House right. here in New Hampshire. City two. C uh, uh, Div city two? Yeah, we have two congressional districts. Ah. So I am in city two. Uh, okay. My incumbent is uh, Congresswoman Annie Custer. Ah, she okay. had been there for 10 years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's had five. Uh, f she's been reelected five times. That's plenty. Wow. Uh, I don't know about you, Lily, but I'm for term limits for federal I officials. signed a pledge. If you I did. get elected, I will co sponsor and vote for term limits on Congress. Excellent. I'm a big term limits person as well. You know, I think that one of the biggest problems that we see in Washington today, Washington today is the level of corruption, uh, the fact that they're able to commit um, insider trading, that they will pass bills that line their pockets mm -hmm. from special interest groups and things like that. And I personally would like to see some more transparency and, and to drain the swamp, mm -hmm. as, as Donald Trump used to say. Well, swamp is pretty deep. But when you look at the today where we are as Americans, it's like a, what happened in the past? So why is our federal government getting so big and and out of control spending, yeah. run away inflation, in yeah. highest in 40 years, highest uh, gas price in my time since I come to this country. I've been here for 34 years. I, I just feel like uh, I have never seen America in crisis like mm -hmm. this before. You know, we yeah. always, uh, you know, somehow, you know, come back and, but now it's like, I'm really worried that my children, three children who are born in this country, will not be able to live and um, achieve their American dreams anymore. Yeah. Well, and I know you've been very outspoken in your campaign and with some other organizations you're a member of. You're from China, so you actually have, have experience seeing Mao's revolution and the effect that that had on China and the Chinese people. Mm -hmm. Is that what's, that's really what's spurring you on to run for office and to get involved? Well, when I, when I become an educator to go to our schools to teach our youth about horrors of communism and socialism, mm -hmm. I, I, I was just so shocked that they really don't know much at all. Remember when they bought into a Bernie Sanders like a kind of mm. a socialist rhetoric and yeah. free stuff from the government and 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 they and they all want equity nowadays and social justice and those are all communist like uh, terms I heard before. Yeah. Why why are they doing this in our country? It's not American. It's a, it's a very very progressive socialist policies actually remind me what I heard growing up in China because equity it's about having equal outcomes mm. how could you have equal outcomes without the government use of force to take away from people yeah. who are producing productive citizens and giving to have not so it is actually classic uh, marxist the class struggle and you know haves and and have not and and, and the identity politics fight each other mm. but now we're using a new term called the social justice movement yeah. it, it anti-racism movement but when you actually dig into deeper it's about a wealth redistribution. Yeah. It is about a communist revolution. Yeah. That's why I'm so terrified to see this happening. And last two years, I have seen how our country is divided, and how you know our cities were burning 2020. Yeah. And, uh, and then you saw the pandemic and government to use their emergency powers mm. to shut people down, close schools, and decide if you are essential or not. Yes. I, I just could not believe it. I, I'm not surprised the Chinese government shut down their citizens, locked down, but we are Americans. Yeah, how does that happen in America? And how could Americans support that? And that was the thing that was, that was such a surprise to me. Yeah. Was in Vermont, where I'm from, th there was actually a snitch line set up 
So not only were people, you know, allowing themselves to be locked down, allowing themselves, allowing their businesses to be shut down, their kids to be sent home from school, but then they were encouraged to tattle on one another if, if they were behaving like what the government said. And I just, I was so confused that something like that could happen in America where we're literally encouraging government overreach to the point where we want our neighbors to be to be tattletailing on one another. I mean, that's just terrifying. So I survived Mao's Cultural Revolution. Mm. I summarized 12 features or his tactics he used to do his cultural revolution. You can check every box yeah. with today what's happening in America, but at a smaller scale. Yeah. What you just said, destroy families, destroy the citizens' trust of each other, yeah. and turn neighbors against each other, report to government. It's the one of the, his tactics during the Mao's cultural revolution. And how do we allow happening here? How do our citizens like I even use that communist tactic yeah. to, take, to take away people's trust. That's what it's, it's a further erosion of the social fabric that allows us to be in community with one another. And, and, that, and plus you talk about division, right? And then it is politics. That's another mm -hmm. um, similarity I see. Yeah. And you heard about critical race theory, DEI, equity or social emotional learning. Yeah. America is systemic racist country, 1619 project, whatever fancy names they use. Yeah. It's all about identity politics. Oh yeah. And based on skin color, based on uh, your even gender yeah. and uh, sub divided people into yeah. all kinds of groups. And, but uh, it's fundamentally the same as a Marxist said, yeah. oppressor versus oppressed. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the things that makes me so upset about the rhetoric I hear is it's, it's absolutely demeaning and diminishing of anybody who's not white. Uh, you know, we say, we say BIPOC as if everybody who's Asian, black, Hispanic, everyone who's not white is somehow a monolith and all supposed to think the same, vote the same, be the same. And I'm just, I, I don't understand that is some of the most racist thinking I've ever heard, uh, uh, racist rhetoric I've ever heard. And so how can they say that they're anti-racist while dividing us by race? Or folks are obsessed with the people's skin color and race yeah. instead of folks on like what Dr. King said, individual, mm. you know, character yeah. and the meritocracy. Yeah. And they, 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 they don't do that. Like, 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 like people, like the aging Americans' children who are going through like Harvard and the Yale uh, enrollment process now, yeah. they also look at their skin color to say, oh, another aging here and we'll throw you behind the line because we've got too many of them yes. and uh, you're not qualified, you cannot get admitted because uh, quotas. Yeah. So, so, so the focus, only focus on their skin color you and do, race. You, focus, you want us to focus on education. You talk about how important education is to pulling people up out of poverty, changing generational uh, poverty in these things, and then you're going to reject people who prioritize education right. and trying to overcome those things. So the real, real conversation we should have is why people of color um, get trapped inside of generational poverty. Yeah. I mean, are they allowed to have a school choice? Right. They say um, black Americans, they are stuck inside of the inner city failing schools and lots of those family households are single mothers yes. and working on lots of multiple part-time jobs and, and they have no father role models at home and the schools are not interesting and not you know um, yeah. motivating the kids to study so what do kids do they they, they involve in gangs you yeah. know and they do other things but but if you look at the, really all the democrat control the big blue cities and big blue states yeah. they're in the pockets of teachers unions so they actually, like D.C., for example, the Democrats killed charter schools, Bill, yeah. to let the kids, let the parents to decide what school is best for them. But there's a conversation to be had. And when they are used, like people of color, even the agents, right, sometimes they're just used as pawns for the yes. Democrat Party to advance their political yes. talking points agenda. But actually, 
you know, minorities are not benefiting from their policies. Exactly. Well, and that's what one of the things that's so frustrating to me as the wife of a black man, when he tells the story of his mom who was raised in a segregated racist town in upstate New York and that she saw joining the military as her way out. She said, I'm going to change my life and I'm going to change the trajectory of my family because I'm, I'm not willing to accept this as, as it is. And so she raised her son uh, to understand everything that had happened in the past, but she did not raise him with a victim mindset. You know, she didn't tell him that he was never gonna make it because of mm -hmm. the white man and he was just oppressed mm -hmm. and that he would never have anything. She prioritized education. She made sure that he was disciplined. She mm -hmm. made sure that he was a good man, that he had values and respect and morals right. and all of those things. And so he's not a victim. He's not, he's not needing the pity right, of any right. white people yeah. to be successful and to, and to rise above anything negative that has happened in this country in the right. past. And so this idea that, 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 that is like, it's like, like infantilization. Is that the right word? Where basically you're, it's like, you just are pathetic and you need our pity for you to be okay. Well, the thing is, uh, um, I think uh, after the 60s, you know, like a civil rights movement, yeah, and um, get rid of uh, um, those discrimination, it's a good thing. I have seen that uh, um, America has come a long way from the, you know, and yes. the old uh, um, um, system. And so today we need to emphasize, incentivize individuals, doesn't matter skin color, to work hard on your own and take responsibility That's for yourself. Right. When I come to this country as a people of color, a Chinese immigrant, I, I couldn't even speak English well. And I had nothing, I was negative in debt, $100 borrowed in my pocket, yeah. $1,200 in debt and couldn't speak English. I'm running for U.S. Congress today. <laughs> I and love it. I, I started from zero, like almost 24 years old in this new country. How do you sell me? Oh, America is a systemic racist country. I'm supposed to be sit on my butt. That's I'm right. oppressed. I'm a yes. victim. Yep. I have three home businesses and uh, I, I'm living American dream. I love it. And uh, that's why I feel like I'm so blessed in this country because yeah. this country is actually a land of opportunity. Shining yes. city on the hill for free, freedom lovers. And all over the world. All over the world. And lots of immigrants still trying desperately to come to this country. Yeah. But look what the left is sending us. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're oppressed, you're a victim. You got to rely on government, otherwise yeah. you cannot achieve on your own. That's right. And the separate kids now into school, it's like a new segregation, <sighs> right? It's so it, sad. It's, it's so sad. That's why as minorities, we got to reject those premises. That's right. We got to reject this CRT. That's right. And Absolutely. we need to emphasize that all men are created equal. Yeah. And America is still land of opportunity, but we need the good system to incentivize people. For example, I really emphasize, you know, family support yep. and uh, also the um, school choice. Okay. If if people of color stuck inside the inner city failing schools, That's they right. got to be able Better to take education. their money to yes. take another school outside yeah. of the neighborhood. Some That's parents right. are willing to do that because, but they don't have money. Yep. So you only enable rich people who can pay their kids to go to private schools. How about minority families? Who, yep. who, who are working on the two regular you know, jobs and yep. they don't have that luxury. Yep. So that's why I don't like those rhetorics because those Democrat rhetorics, like they pay their kids to go to private school. That's right. And then they shut down your public school during the COVID. And uh, look how many kids feel even more further behind. They're hurt the working class, the minority, actually children the most. Well, and that's exactly, that's what, the, the, in, the, in the name of safety and, and whatever else, you actually brought the minority population, folks who are poor and lower mm -hmm. income, that we now see, we have the evidence that they are further behind in school mm -hmm. because they were less likely to have the resources at home, they were less likely to have the support at home, mm -hmm. and, and, and we, just, we just said, you know what, we, we don't, how can you say that you care about the working class and then m take actions that are the, the polar opposite of actually caring about the working right. class. Right. I think the Democrats, especially the leadership, is, are 
kind of uh, infiltrated by, by progressive and progressives. Yeah. You know, there are 97 members of uh, progressive members of uh, progressive caucus in the U.S. Mm. Congress. Not just squad, not just AOC, 97. Yeah. Oh, wow. I if I get that. elected, actually, I would be very outnumbered, right? I need like maybe 20 of me get elected <laughs> to call out those socialist policies. Well, that's what we're hoping. Yeah, Both yeah. of us are going to get elected this year. Yeah, the thing is uh, also they claim they're for the working poor. But your policies are hurting working poor. Yeah. Like uh, out of spending, printing money out of thin air we cannot afford. That's right. Of course, when you flood money, flood the market with lots of uh, paper money, then inflation is super high. Yep. Your $1 becomes 80 cents. Then gas price is super high. How does that help the working exactly. class families? Exactly. People are hurting. They it's, cannot even buy food price. Food price is up everywhere, too. That's when I talk to the, the seniors in my community who are on fixed incomes, you know, they, they are seeing ever rising property taxes, ever rising uh, income taxes, and taxes from the federal, from the state, particularly in Vermont. We have one of the highest taxed states in the country. I think only behind California or New York or something like that. In terms like of state income tax? In, in terms of state income tax, property tax. We have um, we have the highest, one of the highest tax burdens. How do people afford that? And that's the thing. It's in a state of about just over half a million people. Yes. And so, so who, and all of our young people are leaving because they can't afford to buy a house. There's very few job prospects because the, the higher the taxes go, the more the businesses leave. It's a beautiful state. And it's that, like, a, well, people are leaving California too. Yes. California is a beautiful state. Progressive always, Democrats always ruin the beautiful state. They do. They and do. They, they also trying to um, always create a massive government dependency, yeah. make you feel like a victim and make you depend on government, but then give you a whole bunch of strings attached, the mandates attached. If you don't follow, then we can take those away from yeah. you. It's well, and that's what people don't understand. When your rights come from God, okay, and you don't have to believe in God, but if you believe in natural rights, like, like the Republican Party does, right? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of association, freedom of travel, Second Amendment rights. If you believe in natural law and our natural rights in this country, that they come from God, that means they cannot be taken away from you. But if the government doles out the rights, if the government decides what your rights are mm -hmm. and what your privileges are, then you're wholly dependent on their mercy mm -hmm. and, and their grace. Well, to tell you the truth, when I grew up in China, I did not even know the concept of individual right mm. given to me you know, by my creator, by God, not by any government, until I met a U.S. exchange student. Ah. who told me about that racial independence. Interesting. So I, I'm a very constitutionist Republican because I do believe our rights pre-exist, you know, before any government, before any laws, yes. you know, uh, it comes with us by being ourselves. Yeah, just for being born a human being. Yes, and the human dignity and the human, you know, um, you know, pride to be respected. Yeah. But uh, today I see how the government treat American citizens kind of reminded me, oh, I feel like I'm back to China again. It, it's, uh, that's why my slogan is that I'm running for Congress because I fear the country I love is becoming the country I left. It's uh. a scary, you know, you talk about cancel culture, talk about censorship, and talk about the mandates. If you if you are a healthcare worker, you don't don't take a vaccine, you can lose your job and get a fire. Then we have healthcare worker shortages, and you're supposed to provide adequate healthcare to all the you know people here so it's like their policies just don't make sense it doesn't. it's like the world is upside down and so now it's like they they shut you down they make you stay home no jobs right unemployed and then they give you some unemployment checks but how much of that actually went to scammers you know, yes. even even Bill Maher knows two yes. hundred thousand billion dollars of PPE money went to scammers. Exactly, government is worse people They're, to handle our money. So I, you know, I did not bring copies with me today, unfortunately. But my husband and I wrote a book. It's called Reasons to Trust the Government. It's blank. Yeah, it's not that many. It's literally <laughs> blank. It is yeah. because here, let me get this. You got a little. You got a little. <laughs> Thank uh, a you. little leaf in there. Yeah. So it because we've just seen over time, you know, the worst atrocities that we've seen in this country were sanctioned by the government. 
whether it was uh, Jim Crow, slavery, you see the Tuskegee experiments. I mean, I literally asked him, I said, I don't know how any black person could ever trust the government given the way that they have been treated over the course of time. Right. And so we're like, we just, the evidence that we cannot trust the government is is enormous. And 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 then they talk about like a let's say mass shooting, right? And then use that excuse yes. to do more gun control. Do people even know? I always tell people the largest mass killer, you know, is a tyrannical government. A hundred million people died yes. under communism. A hundred million. And they don't talk about that. You want me to trust government to say they will never become tyrannical, so I, I should just subject to gun control yeah. laws? No, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a very staunch supporter of yeah. Second Amendment, right? Look at the Tiananmen Square anniversary is coming up. How many students killed, got killed, peaceful protesters? That's right. And, and, they, and the case is sealed. You cannot even Google them to say Tiananmen Square massacre, it's censored words. You know, of course, the Communist Party controls all the social media, all the mm. press, all the education, and uh, you, you know, lots of information are censored. I will never trust the numbers, official numbers from them. What did you think when you heard about the disinformation board that was being formed? Abolish it. And <laughs> I Good. don't. I don't want the Ministry of yes, Truth in this country. I that's what I was. Yeah. I literally was like, "This is 1984. If this is not <laughs> evidence that 1984 is coming true, and uh, you. So I, I said, uh, for, as soon as they announced it, I said, if I'm elected, defund it, abolish it. Yeah. And now it looks like they lost it they anyway. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah because like, people were. They there was an uproar from the American people. We said, no, 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 this is, you're not going to do that. It's so unconstitutional. It's, it is, it's you, know, you, you know, government should, uh, you know, get out of this, uh, you know, interference with any speech, with any press. It's not their job. Yeah. You know, they're supposed to, their role of government is protect life, liberty, and property, and the national defense. But they're not doing the no. job they're supposed to do, but they expand not. into all the other areas. And yeah. they cannot even secure our border right now, but that's your primary role. How do you do national defense when you leave your border right open? Oh. Now you see all the drug traffickers That's right. and, and the human traffickers. Also inhuman. You know, look at it. all the kids got to smuggle into country. That's Their parents right. have to pay high price and they are taking life risks. Yes. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, that's what I'm saying that uh, it's uh, so upside down. Immigrants like me are very, very terrified to yeah. say why the communists you know, are so many here in this country. How did they get into within American society? Well, they have been planning to do this for a long yeah, time. It's I, the long game. I, I see yep. that like the former KGB urine said, it's That's it's a generational demoralization, destabilization, right. then the crisis, and then they finally, you know, I think one in the third stage already. It's oh, one yeah. crisis after another crisis. You know, you know when you, when you look at it today, it's so incompetent. Yeah. You know, very progressive. Uh, you know, the the um, White House uh, administration and yeah. the Congress, their Congress is still trying to talk about print more money, a and our people are suffering. Already cannot afford gas prices. They want to print more money and push it for Green New Deal or BBB, Build Back Better. Yeah, it's outrageous. It, it's, it's like, how can you honestly support those narratives? Yeah. I think the people who voted for them, this is the year to wake up yep. and change course of action by voting for something different. That's right. Because otherwise you want to go see your gas goes like $10, $10 again. Yeah. And the, and you cannot afford to ever eat bacon again, <laughs> right? Uh, yes. Or, or, or like a government yeah. is like they don't even think about consequences when they shut oh, down factories yeah, have, yes. and w when they shut down people and you have all kind of shortages and now you have a f you know baby formula shortages. That's crazy. So when country. the regulars is coming, unelected bureaucrats have power to legislate, to pass laws, regulations affect your life, my life every day, but they don't think about consequences because there are no accountability. Who is responsible, for example, for yeah. this food shortages? For all this baby sh uh, formula shortages. It, it's it just, someone else's fault. It's yeah. everyone else's fault but their own. It can't possibly be their own decision making and it that's, can't possibly be that they're responsible. I have three children, young adult children. That's why I'm really worried. Yeah. What kind of country they will be living in? Mm -hmm. how, how can they achieve their American dream? And if we do become a more socialist country, which will need eventually to communism, yeah. 
what happened to me will happen again to them. It's not not on my watch. Yeah. As long as I'm living here yeah. every day, I, I'm gonna try to stop it. Well, speaking of not on your watch, why don't you tell our viewers uh, your your website, how they can support you, where to go to donate, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, my um, website is LilyTangWilliams.com. Uh, you can donate and uh, you can also share and urge other people to donate. And, and if you have friends in New Hampshire, tell them to volunteer, get them a yard signs. I'm on Facebook, Little for Congress, and YouTube, and Twitter, and Instagram. I'm everywhere. Yes. I'm trying to take my messages, uh, you know, to the whole country. And uh, we we need that message. We need your voice. We need to hear your experience so that people can understand. You know, this isn't just a crazy right wing conspiracy theory. You literally are reliving something that you've already lived in your home it's country. It's scary. And I just, I just really want to thank you, and I want to honor you for taking the time, uh, and and standing up, you know, for for telling the truth and saying the unpopular things that nobody wants to hear that we absolutely need to hear. And well, because I don't, I don't want to lose this country. I have no place to go. If we lose freedom, <laughs> yeah, we don't have if place we to lose go. freedom here, where is there to go? Yeah, the world will be a very dark place. It will. And I'm afraid that the China, uh, a communist country, has a plan to be the number one dominant mm. power in the world and they are our largest threat right now yeah. and so wait I don't want our politicians to take uh, their tactics and their terms out of their um, playbook yeah. and to apply to Americans well and know. that's we're gonna change it around we're, bo we're both gonna get elected to Congress this year so now when so our primary in Vermont is August 9th so make sure you get out vote in the primary in New Hampshire it's September 13th September 13th so yeah. New Hampshire uh, District 2, seat 2 uh, for, for House here in New Hampshire. Get out, vote September 13th, and then get out in November. And then we shall each other. Good luck. Yes. Yeah, good yeah, luck. Good yeah, luck. yeah, we'll keep in touch. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Thank yeah. you for taking the time to speak Well, with thank me you today. for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. All right, bye, everybody. Bye.